Hey, hello everyone and welcome to another Fortnite video. As promised, I am using this skin and I am also post-commentating because I made this a couple hours after I made the last Fortnite video. I was like, yeah, I'll, I'll keep exploring the new season and stuff like that on my own time and do some recording because maybe I'll get a win out of it. Well, I got a win pretty quickly. <laughs> So maybe I was just sucking because I was commentating at the time or something like that. And I was like, whoops, yeah, I was playing around on the handheld mode, so I switched from roll, I mean, to, from yaw to roll, and I had to switch it back over there because I was like, oh yeah, I, I, I kind of forgot about that. So anyway, yeah, I'm just kind of warming up more than anything here. And <laughs> so yeah, I got, we've got some stuff for the map exploring stuff and stuff. You need to take a look, see around there. I think I'm going to... Why did I do that? I thought, why did I do that? I don't know. Well, the thing about it was, <laughs> the thing about it was I was going to mark that corner of the map and, you know, go over there because it's way out in the outreaches and then just go over there with the, the bus, but then I accidentally hit the jump button. And <laughs> so I was like, okay, I'm going to go over here instead because this is also an unmarked part of the map. So this is a place that I dropped a uh, quite a lot before the little outlying islands because not a lot of people would drop here as you know people I mean I tend to gravitate at, at least for the early game to places that people are not dropped at just for the sake of just makes it easier to survive for the long term and get yourself set up and stuff like that so yeah I popped on over here and got that activated on the map of course the islands are mostly submerged now except for that one little shell hut there but apparently as the season goes on the water is going to recede more and more so I presume they are going to re-reveal themselves uh, along with other locations it said that there's gonna be other locations then I went over to the big old whirlpool for a little bit of travel and I was gonna peek along here and see here what should I go by maybe I should go over to the windmill over there or wait wait maybe I should go to the shark I'm not sure I'm not sure and windmill so, <laughs> so I was like oh sharky shark is here and also another player is here I still don't have any weapon though because I yeah I, I thought there was gonna be a <laughs> I thought there was gonna be a yeah uh, um a chest over by that shell house place so I was like yeah there wasn't and now I gotta look for stuff but I think that other person is fighting the shark over there anyway is more concerned about the shark than me so I'm gonna go in the house I'm gonna go loot that I'm gonna edit very poorly and I am gonna go back over to that player and see if I can get them defeated only the shark already defeated the player <laughs> those sharks those sharks are something. <laughs> As a matter of fact, this game was pretty weird in general because I didn't really have that many human encounters, you know, like other player encounters for most of the game. So it's just very, very odd how things played out in this game. So I was able to do a ton of looting as a result of that. Like, you know how I tend to go all around the place in games just in general and uh, explore things like a hamster going around. I was, I was looking to see if that shark followed me on land. And yeah, you know how I just, in, in games, I tend to go to every corner and every nook and cranny of places to see what change. I should not have done that, I realized. I know, I know. And I, I switched back over, but yeah. Uh, so this was like my opportunity, because I haven't seen that many players to, you know, explore the place without too much opposition. Although I know I could do that in the... Uh, battle lab mode as well, but I don't know. I just kind of kind of have more fun doing it when there's players around, you know? <laughs> when, there's that, when there's the whole risk factor of things and all like that. I really love the sharks, by the way. <laughs> oh man! Oh man, they're running out of ammo. They got so much HP, but yeah. <laughs> I wanted to see what that shark is carrying. They're actually called loot sharks, as you may have seen uh, in the text and stuff like that, because they often carry something good or at least a bunch of stuff in general and well that one kind of didn't <laughs> I I'm not exactly sure how they work how what I presume is that they go around and pick up stuff 
for you to collect if you defeat them. You know, like they eat it. They do indeed eat the stuff. And, uh... And there's my incredible building skills right there. I, I still gotta work on that, I know, I know, but it was it was the same day, but anyway. <laughs> but yeah, about the sharks, they they go around picking up stuff, and I think what they pick up you can get out of them if you were to defeat them. So I think because it was so early in the game, they didn't have much time to pick up stuff in their looting and the like, so... I was like, eh, okay, I, 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 I guess that makes sense when I thought about that. <laughs> And I will most certainly have this drink, for it is delicious and nutritious, and put me up to full health. Delightful. Delightful. There's a, apparently some sort of achievement for using shield potions, as if you're not going to use shield potions otherwise, I don't know. <laughs> I'm going to do some reordering of stuff here. I'm not going to use the pistol or the gray AR, I figure. So I was like, eh, maybe I'll drop them over here. If someone else wants to get them... I'll have a better weapon than they do anyway, so... <laughs> it's also in the house, so chances are they won't see it if I leave all doors open and stuff like that. And, you know, if it's open, it'd be like, oh yeah, yeah, that, that place is looted, I probably shouldn't even bother, and thus, they'll leave the weapons anyway. So, yeah. I'm also playing around with the uh, controller grip that I have at the moment. That's why I'm kind of jeering all over the place. I don't know why, but I just wasn't feeling super comfortable. Oh, and yeah, these are gnomes. You gotta search three of them around this particular area here. I find two of them this video. Um, but you can find the third one. I do believe in that house that you see over there, uh, in the rooftop area. Or maybe it's in another rooftop area. Uh, yeah, okay, maybe it wasn't this one that I found it, because I, I went in this roof and I, I probably didn't find the gnome at the time. Definitely grabbing that shield potion. Yeah, it wasn't this one. So it was another one of the houses, maybe it was one of the back houses that had a, uh, um, that was a super chest by the way, that, a very rare chest, uh, that had one of the gnomes, but yeah, you could find the third gnome in one of the rooftops, and you can also find another gnome in a garden, I happen to find another gnome next to another tree, so there's at least five gnomes that I know of around here, so your chances are you won't need a guide for looking for them. You just need to know the general location where they're at, and you just wander around until you find gnomes, basically, and then just search them. You can't actually destroy the gnomes, even if you destroy the surfaces that are underneath the gnomes. They just kind of float in midair. <laughs> like if you destroyed the ones I said in the, the rooftop one, as I mentioned. Uh, someone was here before. Maybe it was me! I don't remember. No, I think it was someone else. But yeah, the, uh... So, you shouldn't have much difficulties with gnomes. Oh, it wasn't a tree that I found the other one. It was a rock. My mistake. Got them mixed up. <laughs> so yeah, there's two gnomes. Then there's another one in a uh, garden being grown. I think he was at one of the back houses. Um, I think it's that one straight ahead that you see there. That one over there, so that would be where the third one is, but I'm just kind of looking around trees and stuff where I found the other gnomes, figuring that is where I would encounter more of them, but no, no, it doesn't appear to be the case. Yeah, I don't remember where the garden was. Oh, yeah, I think that was the back garden over there, because I see a little fence over there, and there was a gnome hanging out over there. It was somewhere in one of the, one of the gardens attached to the houses on the outside, so... But at this moment in time, I see the storm coming in, and I was like, eh, eh, I should probably just separate that and come back another time, because I don't have any sort of, um, like, regular health rest restoration items, like a med kits, bandages, or anything like that. Not even the mythic bottomless chug jug or anything, so it's like, yeah, I, I think I ran out of time, and I should probably get going. So, yeah, as I was saying... I really was just not encountering people this game. It's very, very weird, but I figured it would at least be helpful to show the entire game in general because uh, I could show you the locations of the gnomes. And yeah, I see that player over there, but then I kind of lose the player. Just kind of looking around here. I see them, see them hopping along there. Should I take a shot? Sure, I should. But then the person kind of goes in the bush. And I'm like, eh, maybe I should try and fight, but I don't know. It just seems like the storm is coming. I can't really build in the water. Maybe I should go around. So again, that was another point where it was like, yeah, I'm not really encountering a player player. I peek over there. I didn't see the player pop out or anything like that. So the player is probably still in the bush. That is a very far storm circle. I'm still looking for the player. See if I'll be shot at by said player, but 
Anyway, I'm gonna just keep on going along. I decided not to use the zip line because it'll actually lead me kind of away from the spot. I don't think that was the person that was that I fired at before, just based on the sound. But I'm gonna box up here and go inside the house to confuse them of my location. And anyway, I'm gonna <laughs> also add a little roof there in case of a grenade. So yeah, still technically not really encountering a player. I'm pretty sure that that person sniping was attacking the other player that was in the bush or something like that, because that didn't sound like it was at the same spot. You know, you got the spatial uh, sound awareness thing when you play the game enough, you get you get kind of an idea of what the uh, the sounds relate to in, yeah, in position to where you are and stuff like that. You could also turn on a thing in the options to have visual uh, sound effects, although you lose the spatial things, that's more for uh, people of hard of hearing. But uh, people also may use it just as a personal preference thing, so you might want to try. Now that, that was most certainly directed towards me. <laughs> I don't know where that sniper was, but I do know there's a chest over here, and I'm gonna go check for that chest, of course. I decided to swap out the pistol for the hunting rifle, because the hunting rifle is kind of like a sniper of sorts, sort of, kind of, and I already have my mid-range thing via the burst assault rifle in the rare blue variety, and I was like, eh, yeah, I'm probably better off having that instead of the, the pistol, so I decided to drop that, go for the hunting rifle, and I used the spring eating there. I'm pretty sure those are unbreakable, actually. I thought that someone uh, put that in place in the other video, but uh, I think those are actually just set up there as like a way to get around the, the water area. You know, that they all, raise it all to the same level and stuff like that. So yeah, I, I don't believe those are breakable at all, but you can jump on them just like regular crash pads to bounce around, which is fun. And <laughs> so, oh, I see someone building over there. And I'm like, need to get on land, the water is panic zone. Need to get out, okay. <laughs> But I think that person was focused on someone else. Ah, poopers, I lost my opportunity there. Kinda, sorta. There's a fight happening from one roof to the ground level, and I think that person just lost on the, the ground there. I took a shot at the person at the roof there. They took a shot at me. I hide behind the tree. See, it's still not really that much a human in encounters here. I mean, yeah, I got one shot in on the person, but now the person, of course, is gonna go inside to heal. And I, I could go after the person, which I consider, but I'm like, eh, eh, by the time I get there, they'll be healed, and eh, I think I'm better off just getting in better position and waiting for them to pop back out, probably, maybe, might be, but at least I got a hunting hunting rifle hit there. I mean, that's, that's rare for me. <laughs> so yeah, I just keep on going over to the circle, but unfortunately, this is leading me kind of over to the authority, and, you know, in terms of my cover and stuff like that, and that's, that's not always the most inspiring, I mean, the most uh, confidence-inducing, I should say, place to go to, because as I said, I try to avoid these high, uh, high, uh, I decided to use the, uh, I mean, I decided to swap them in case I wanted to try both, but then I was like, eh, I'll go back to that just in case, because... <laughs> I don't know why, but anyway, yeah, I don't like to go to these high traffic areas, even though they have the mythic weapons, because the chances of you coming out of it, not very good, <laughs> even if you're a good player, from what I've seen. So I was like, eh, mm, do I really want the mythic weapons that much, and I could just probably outplay them and just take them from whoever got the mythic weapons later on anyway? Probably not, so I decided to just not go to those areas for the most part, and I heard something around here, a little chest there, I decided to keep the burst assault, and I've already got max shields and stuff like that, decided to peek out through there, I don't see anyone, so I just keep on going down, and look at what I found, I mean, look, excuse me, look at what I find over here, the vault's been open, and there's a whole bunch of poop left over, so I decided to grab contact as uh, compact, SMG, why is he contact? I don't know. Now they decide, oh, this was left, so that they probably have an even better assault rifle than that, which is kind of amazing if you think about it. They probably took the uh, drum gun that was over here. Uh, that was like, what? Well, yeah, I think I'm pretty well stacked myself. I looked at all this stuff, and I'm like, yeah, I think I'm gonna take this stuff 
As is, at this moment in time, I'm experimenting with the uh, charged shotgun. I'm not sure I'm really feeling it, because it's a very predictable weapon with that whole uh, sound that it makes, I guess you could say, when you're charging it up, so no one will really fall for it. Uh, but you can use it as just like a regular shotgun. Although, if you don't release your finger off the trigger quick enough after you press the shoot button, it's going to feel like that there's a delay because there's a charge effect of it. But it, it really, there really is no delay with the charge shotgun. You just have to release the button as quick as you possibly can after you press it to release the charge shotgun. I think that, um, I, I've seen people say it has a delay, and even I thought it had a delay at first, but after I played around with it, I was like, no, no, no it doesn't have a delay. It's just that there's no... There's no shot as soon as you press the button. You've got to release it as fast as possible, and then you got to feel that release in your shot. To, you know to get your shot off how you please. I'm gonna go for this person over here. Got a couple shots on them there, which is pretty nice to get them all nice and distracted and everything like that. And I'll be able to cross over to the other side if I keep them distracted. Probably, maybe. Might be, but I am not po entirely positive because I don't know who is on the other side of the water. As I said before, the water is panic zone. <laughs> so, so, I was like, hmm, I I'm not sure if I want to even use the zip line too, because the zip lines are really, really predictable movements. So I was like, eh? Eh, maybe I shouldn't. At least not use this zip line. It's gonna put me right by the opponent there. So I was like, "What should I do here?" I'm gonna just maybe I'll just keep switching sides and kind of mix them up, and you know, kind of open that up a little bit and make it easier easier to jump around if need be. And I'm like, "Okay, maybe I should go and use this tunnel instead and take a peek see around." See if I can get another look at the person. I see the person going off this side, and then they start building. <laughs> it's like they knew, they knew I was watching, or something like that. I don't know. Maybe they did. Maybe they didn't. It's just a thing of that. Uh, they probably just built because I was. They they knew I was looking around that area, and they wanted to make a small break for it, and then start building before I could get a shot off on them. Possibly, maybe. And I just I thought maybe I should drop down below. But, but then I decided, no, 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 wait, maybe I should go and build a little ramp wall here and consider moving when the time is right, basically. Because there's still, oh, oh, that, that could be a problem. There's another one focused on me, so I'm like, oh, geez, now what am I going to do? Because now there's two dealios on me. I look around for some decent way out, because, you know, the storm is, uh... The storm is kind of going to be coming, and then I decide, you know what, I'm going to use the launch pad, and sure enough, I got hit by the sniper, but, well, well, I was just a little bit too slow, and I should have put a wall, it was my own fault. I'm going to go in here, and I'm going to try and heal up as quickly as possible. The trouble is, though, is there's not, you know, there's that other person right in front of me, they have their bills, and I'm going to watch for stuff, there's the other person. And this looks like a good opportunity, so I go for it. Keep shooting, even if they build a wall, because you can go right through the wall. Very nice. So I finally got a kill after all the damage I was doing the players <laughs> throughout the game. And I'm looking for... Yeah, I've seen the person, like, off to the side there, but now I'm looking for the person on the side of the boulder. But I noticed that I'm low on ammo, so I decided to go over to the SMG to try and break that boulder. Try and get some shots over and get some damage done because you know, you know, I'm not that good at build battles. So I was like, mm, I'll play to my strengths and just go for aim and just kind of faking the opponent out. Opponent is trying to figure out where I am just by shooting randomly into bush. They can't see exactly where I am, but uh, they, they'll be able to tell if they hit me because they'll see a number pop up. Um, now, over here, I wait for the opponent to peek, and then I take a couple shots, and they're gonna duck down again, probably to heal and stuff like that, so I'm gonna go try and break some stuff out there to try and drop them down and maybe get a hit off. Possibly, maybe. And see, I'm considering building, but I'm like, if I build, then that'll kind of reduce my options of where I'm able to shoot. So I'm like, eh... And maybe I'll hold off and just let the opponent come to me and just keep peeking. It's not that big of a deal as you see. I'm, I'm quick enough to shoot 
and they don't know where I am, so I, I'm ch so chances are I'm gonna be able to get shots off on them before they are, they're able to find me with their bullets. So I just kind of waited out here and again, play to my strengths. The storm is gonna be going off to my right, so that person is actually gonna have to move eventually too. So it's just a thing of that. Hmm, what should I do? Should I keep on camping here or should I build myself a tower? I think I'm gonna keep on camping here until until I can't anymore. Oh, oh wait, wait, I seen that. I seen that that means the player is gonna be coming towards me, yeah. And that's how it ends. <laughs> See, playing to my strengths. Rather than getting into a build battle, I was like, okay, I'll do an aim off of sorts. <laughs> Alright, so, the, uh, the level ups, uh, there I got some stuff, good times, good times, I suppose, but, uh, what's better at times is that I won the game, <laughs> and guess what else I found out? Remember that umbrella that I said was, uh, that came in the battle pass that you didn't have to win to earn? You know, you just buy it? I was right, that wasn't the only umbrella. <laughs> <laughs> there is indeed a winning umbrella for the season. You're about to find out what it is. So, well, when this loading screen passes, unfortunately. <laughs> Come on, musical, <clears throat> musicals. Okay, so I got the beachcomber. That's okay. I guess it seems good. Seems good. It fits to the fits the theme. And there it is, the Fortilla Flyer. But because of the lighting, you can't really see it all that well here. I do go into the locker so you can get a better view of the umbrella in just a minute. Well, okay, less than a minute, and there it is. It's got a SOS, a rainbow made out of scrap metal, piping, very fitting for the very destructive Season 3 tsunami of sorts. And with that, I'm going to end off the video here. I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you in the next video.